Good morning. What a good morning it is to see everybody. In the last couple of days have been warm. We wake up to a cool spell, and it's going to be cool and warm and cool and warm, just enough to make everybody sick. Um, but you know, it's good to see everybody who's able to make it out with us uh, today. Uh, you know, as we think about this morning's lesson, the idea of sowing discord, it, it has been said as long as the church is composed of people, there's going to be some problems. Now, is that not true? Uh, you know, because we are people, and as David mentioned earlier, there are times that we sin, and we sin against one another. Uh, Brother James Meadows told us when we were going out trying to find a place to work, he said, you know, if the congregation is perfect before you get there, it won't be when you arrive because you're imp imperfect. And he said, oh, that's, that's pretty good, right? I mean, if everything is as it needs to be, you know, and it's perfect, if you add anything else to it, uh, there are times that, uh, that it, becomes, it becomes imperfect. And you say, well, what are you talking about? Well, it works this way sometimes. We, we think about problems. They're not all on purpose. But, you know, there are sometimes we hurt each other's feelings. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes I hurt people's feelings. Sometimes people hurt my feelings. Sometimes we mistake what someone is saying. Have you ever read something wrong? Now, not necessarily in writing. It could be. But, but somebody saying something to you had it. Have you took it in such a way that the person telling you didn't intend it? I mean, it's possible. That happens. You know, sometimes we just kind of get left out. All of our friends are, are calling each other, and they're wanting to go do something. And because we're not in their midst, we at times get left out. They don't think about us. You know, I have a friend of mine I talked to last night. I said, you know, you're about the only person who calls me that doesn't have something major going on in their life that is wrong. And he looked at me real funny. You know why he calls me? Because he wants something good to talk about. I mean, that's why he calls. Sometimes, just because of proximity, we get left out. Sometimes we feel alone. Sometimes we might just feel alone. As if nobody around us wants anything to do with us. And so we might be in a whole room full of people and yet feel like nobody cares. And, you know, sometimes sin gets a grip on us. What do you mean by that? I mean, sometimes we're, the sins that we've committed in the past catch up with us, and we're committing those things again, and we're committing those against our brothers, our sisters, the people that we love the most. Sometimes that happens to us. When we think about sins that hinders the growth of the church, so in discord is one of those sins. So in discord will keep the congregation from growing, from thriving, and will even keep us as individuals from growing in our own faith. You know, sometimes sowing discord is on purpose. On purpose, someone says, I don't like the direction this is going. And so I'm going to say something about it to, to make it kind of stop. And you know, sometimes, even with good intentions, we set out to go and do this or that, but instead of doing something positive in nature, we do something negative in, the na in nature. And so we end up causing heart hurt and harm. Even if we intended to do good, we, we said it and did it otherwise. And it hindered what we're trying to accomplish. And so this morning's lesson, the topic that we're looking at, is this idea of sowing discord. And so we ask the question, first of all, what are you talking about discord? Because if I'm Talking to someone who's, I don't know, 25 or younger, it's a social media platform. We just get together and share ideas. And that's not what I'm talking about. That has nothing to do with this. Then what are you talking about? I'm talking about bringing up about strife and contention. Doing things that cause strife and contention. You might look, look at it this way. They're causing trouble. Not in a good way. I mean, in a bad way. I mean, if we're doing the wrong things and someone looks at us and says, you know, you ought not do that. Well, that's actually for our benefit. But what if we're doing the right things, the good things, and someone says, I don't like the way this is going. And that could be something completely different. It could be something completely different. Notice, we turn our Bibles back to Proverbs chapter 6. Uh, and, and when we look through this, uh, this, uh, this description, 
Notice they're called wicked in verse 12. Notice again, walks with a perverse mouth, speaks things that ought not speak. speak. Um, they wink with their eyes. Have you ever known anybody to tell you something that hurts your feelings and says, oh, I'm just joking? Uh, shuffles their feet. They got, go from place to place. They got to tell the, the greatest news. Points with the fingers. Points with the fingers. You know, there's something about pointing at other people's faults that we neglect. Have you ever thought about it? When we point with one finger, we got three pointing back at us. They really have a problem. Wait a minute, who really has the problem? Let's, let's get to the end of that. Notice uh, perversity is in our heart. The idea is there's discontentment in there. And so he thinks of ways to, to, to do evil or to disrupt what is good. You know, sometimes we've got to look at that. Doing evil isn't just doing the wrong thing. Doing evil is keeping the right thing from being done. Now, we don't often think about it that way. Generally, we think about evil. It's like Satan goes about and he's tempting everybody to sin, and so we're going the wrong way because we're falling into sin. But if I hinder people from doing the right thing, that in itself is evil. It's evil. Uh, it's kind of like this. Um, Lonnie Jones mentioned last weekend uh, this idea that um, that, that um, lack of obedience is disobedience. The idea if you know to do what is right and you don't do it, it's still a sin. Lack of urgency is still disobedient. And so when we think about evil, it's the same thing. Just because we're not going out doing wrong to people, if we keep people from doing what is right, that is also evil. If we go on and start looking in verse 16, we see six things the Lord hates and seven are an abomination. Now, notice what is being said by the Lord here, or by Solomon here, that the Lord hates and is an abomination. Now, when we think about the word abomination, I, I want to think about the idea it's looked upon with intense hatred. Intense hatred or disdain or distaste. That's, that is an abomination. Now, the Lord is looking at these things in those ways. And you would say, well, just what do you mean by that? How, how, how can I, you give me a word picture so, so I can understand? The, the best thing I can give you is Brussels sprouts or liver and onions. There's very few people that says that's the best dinner ever. And it could be. But the very thought of it sometimes is you cannot handle the thought of eating those two things, particularly even together, let alone apart. And so when we think about an abomination, that's what we're talking about. The idea that when you look at it, it makes you sick to your stomach. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. Now notice... If we look at 12 through 15 and 16 to 19, those lists are very close. They're not so dissimilar to say, well, this is one and this is the other. In fact, one will cause the other. It's really hard to seek unity when we're lying to one another. When we have the big eye, little you syndrome, it's really hard to try to get everybody together. To think we're all equal in this. Whenever we're busy pointing the fingers about what everybody else should do and what they have done and like to do, it's really hard to say, let's go do that together. So when we look at those, these ideas together, devising wicked thoughts and wicked plans and keeping people from doing what is good or, or constructing evil ways, it's really hard to be together when we act that way. In fact, I would say it's impossible to be together if we act that way. So that's what we talk about when we talk about discord. And you say, what's the problem with that? What's, what is the big deal with it? What's, let's give it an earthly example and then we, can, then we can go find the things in Scripture. Have you ever went out to a meal? You sat down. You're with a couple of people, not just you. Uh, maybe it's just you and your family, maybe you and a couple families, and, and you're sitting down at a meal, 
and you order, and you, you're sitting in a restaurant, and you didn't necessarily realize that the prices were going to be at, in orbit when you were done. And you, but you're sitting there, and you say, this is the best thing I've eaten in a long time. That is your opinion. You get the check. Your heart might skip a beat, but you said, I can swallow that because at least it was good. And then you go outside. Now, you know what happens after everybody pays. You know what happens after everybody pays. You know, I can't believe that food that costs that much tastes so terrible. I mean, have you ever heard? I've heard that. When we're enjoying our life, everything is good. It's a, it's a wonderful meal. And there's that one person that says, you know, this is just way too much. The food really wasn't that good anyway. And then all, the, all of a sudden somebody says, you know, that waitress didn't fill my drink up. when she, It was empty and I had to ask for a drink. Oh, that's terrible service all of a sudden. And then the next person's like, you know, that guy when he took my money at the register or they handed my receipt back, whatever it looked like in your case, you know, it looked like he just hated even being there. Why did we show, you know, decide to show up here today? And you sit back and thinking, you know, maybe that meal really wasn't that good. And five minutes ago, it could have walked on water and you'd have been just fine. What happened? Discord is what happened. That's exactly what happened. Everybody is having a great time and then somebody slams the brakes on and says, wait a minute. And you, if you did like, you're like, I'm sure not going to say anything. I'm not inviting these guys back. Or you sit down and say, you know, it really wasn't that good anyway. It's just a waste of my time. See, discord does that. You know, I, I have, except for the fact that men love darkness rather than light, I do not understand why if something bad is happening or going to happen, we listen to that thing, but when things are going good and we're happy and all the pleasantries, nobody says a word about it. Isn't that amazing? We tend to stick with the things that cause hurt, trouble, and confusion. We'll turn our Bibles to Galatians in chapter 5. In the midst of the works of the flesh. Now I want us to think about in that context. The works of the flesh which are compared to the works of the Spirit. Fruits of the Spirit. And the fruits of the Spirit is what God makes and uh, causes to grow in us. The Holy Spirit and reading of His Word and applying it. Things of this nature. The works of the flesh is how we live if we don't care what God thinks or when we forget what God wants us to be like. Have you ever looked at it this way? If we start in verse 20 and we start in the second word, hatred, how many of these things contribute to discord, disunity, strife, or contention? Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, Selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, and we can go ahead and add murders, drunkenness, and reverence. How many of that total list goes into wanting to divide and separate and say this isn't as good as we think it is? There's really something wrong here. Although things are right. Although things are right. Now really think about that. Why is it a problem? Because most of the works of the flesh point to acting in those ways. Everyone. I mean, it's like this. If we sat back and looked at our home and we said, how can I make it a happy home? What are things you're going to have to get rid of? Jealousy and contention and wrath and hatred. All the things we just mentioned that lead to discord. If we're going to be happy together as a congregation of the Lord's people, what are we going to have to deal with? And it's going to be those things that bring to separation. We have to find a way to deal with those in our life and not allow those things to run our lives. See, if we look in James chapter 3 and verse 16, James puts it this way. He says, for where envy and self-seeking exists, now, what would lead someone to cause disunity? 
What were some of the things we read about in Proverbs 6? Where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Where strivings are, evil is right in the midst of it. See, com confusion, man, have you ever gotten a position where things aren't going right? You know they're not going right. You feel they're not going right. They feel they're not going right. There's confusion. You sit back and say, why are we going this way? This is not what I intended. Because evil was right there in the midst of what is going on. If we go back and think about Mark chapter 3, verses 24 and 25, you can turn there, but we're going to just talk about it. Jesus has been accused of casting out demons by Beelzebub. And Jesus says this, A house divided among itself will not stand, it will fall. A kingdom divided amongst itself will not stand, it will fall. Y you know what that means. What's the problem? When we're being divisive, we cannot stand together. We cannot stand together if we're being divisive. If we're being divisive, how much focus, time, effort, and energy is given to Jesus? Not the amount it needs to be. Not the amount it needs to be. When you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we can read the book, and we say, there's a lot of problems in that congregation. I mean, have you ever read the book? I mean, there's lots of problems. And you go back and say, I wonder what it is that caused so much problems among God's people. I can tell you what it is. It starts in verse 10. He says, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you should be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now, first of all, I want us to think about it this way. They're divided because when you start looking at verse 13, that, or verse 12, they're following preachers. That's the first thing you can look at. There's contentions among them. But could you imagine this letter being brought back and them reading it out loud like we're talking about it now? And it is Chloe's household that done told Apostle Paul what was going on. Now think about that for a second. They were following preachers and it caused disunity. Disunity. I follow this one. I follow that one. I was baptized by this one. I was baptized by that one. You can read the whole book. What's the problem? They're not focused on Jesus they're focused on people and it seemed to be they're focused on people in order to get prominence it goes against unity you know when you look back just to flip your Bibles back to Romans 16 the Apostle Paul gives them an encouragement so it's Romans 16 verse 17 it might be just across the page it says, now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses are contrary to the doctrine which you learned, and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. And the simple are those who are desiring to learn. So when we start looking at this idea, if people are causing divisions and offenses and discord, Avoid them because it's just going to bring about more discouragement. So we can go back and we say discord is a humongous problem. It's not a small thing. It's a humongous problem. But you know, the first thing that really hits us that it's a humongous problem is that God sees it as an abomination. And the works of the flesh flow into that and it causes disunity and disruption. But you know there's a cure for it. You know, there's no sin in Scripture that doesn't have some kind of cure. Now, I know we can talk about Jesus' blood, but all I want to talk about is something that was given by holy inspiration that would keep us from dividing amongst ourselves 
saying one side's better than the other side. And it's actually found in Hebrews chapter 12. In Hebrews in chapter 12, starting in verse 12, the, the Hebrews writer has already told them in the first four verses they need to focus on Jesus. They need to focus on Jesus. He's already told them that. He's already told them the Lord chastens whom he loves. He's already told them that. <clears throat> but notice the encouragement. Therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. And make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather healed. You know what discord does? Discord looks at it and says, you know, I cannot believe that person's doing that. I would never do that. Never in a million years, I couldn't even dream I would act and behave like that. I cannot even believe they've even come to worship service this morning. I can't believe it. You know what edification does? It says, I know it's really hard for you this morning. I know you've had a really hard time the last little while. I don't know exactly what to help, but I'm so glad you were able to make it here today. Encouragement. Encouragement. How many words of encouragement do we speak? See, we don't have to worry about discord if we talk about encouraging one another. Encouraging each other to keep on and carry on. You know, that's one of the reasons why we come together as a congregation. Yes, I know it's a take of the Lord's Supper. But it's also to encourage us to keep going. I mean, we just lived six days. Six days. And the world has told us to stop and what you believe is futile and it's not going to do any good. And they may have even told you it was a lie. For six days, you fought a spiritual battle. Six days this week. We come together and say, you need to keep going. You're not alone in this fight. We can help you get through it. You don't have to worry about trying to do all this on your own. All you have to do is ask us, and we'll help the best way we can. And it goes on further. Notice verse 14. Pursue peace with all people. And holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Pursue peace and holiness. Pursue peace and holiness. Don't be trying to cause a fight or a disruption. Try to bring things together. Notice again in verse 15. Looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Lest, notice this. Any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Lest you start sowing discord. Get bitter, disruption. We don't want that. What's the cure? Peace, holiness, togetherness, encouragement. With the, the biblical word we probably would use there is edification. The building up of each other. So we can get from where we are to where we need to be. See, that's the cure. It's awful hard to want to cause disruption with people that you love and you care about. Have you ever not said something because you know if you hurt their feelings? You say it's going to hurt their feelings and you could not stand just wanting to hurt their feelings. So maybe withhold a, a critique or a judgment. Doesn't really help anything, so you just hold it back. I'll give an example. There's a lady I heard that she used to like to wear big hats at church services. And she would ask the preacher about her hats. And this, he looked at me and he said, you know, one day she'd come in and had this, had, had this bird on it. And every time she walked, this little bird bobbed up and down. And she looked at him. And said, what do you think about my hat? That is the most unique hat I've ever seen. And I don't think I could wear it like you do. Probably the best thing he could have said. When we start thinking about how we treat, and, and treat each other, and react to each other, what we say to each other, what we think about each other. Let's seek peace and holiness. Edification and encouragement. In fact, it is Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9 where Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, 
for they shall be called the sons of God. What an amazing blessing. What an amazing blessing. So will that happen? It's possible we may say something or do something that will cause someone to hurt or to stumble or, or to, to trip up in their faith. But that should never be what we desire for it to be or to become. We should be seeking peace with each other, harmony with each other, building up and helping each other go to heaven. That's why we're here. Is help everybody go where they want to go. And that's to their heavenly home. To see their heavenly father. This morning, what is your life like? If you look back to the, catalog, the catalog of your years, what do you see? Is it a life that honors God and upholds the brethren? Or is it one that sows discord and disunity and confusion and hatred? So you don't have to live that way if it's been your past life. You can change it. If you believe that Jesus is the Christ, you're willing to tell people he's the Christ, you're willing to, to change your life in accordance with that fact, we call that repentance. Put him on a baptism, have those sins washed away. Or maybe you've done that and yet started down that wrong path. Repent, pray, come home. You can do that today. You don't have to tarry you any longer. Or maybe you have a need outside salvation that you need to express. Come forward as we sing this song of invitation.